The hottest trend in AI in 2024, in my opinion, is local LLMs, or the idea that you can run open source LLMs on your own hardware. Whether that's just a single 3090, a whole batch of 4090s, or a rented VPS on something like Vast AI, the value and capability of these models is accelerating faster every day, and I would say in certain cases, every hour. In 2023, big models from closed companies like Closed AI were really popular because that's all that was available. And now that people have been hacking against this problem for so long, we have a lot of great ways to run local models. One of those is with 3090s, it's because they're cheap and available on seemingly every corner of the internet. But some startups have been looking at alternatives to this. They've been looking at other form factors, other compute architectures, if you're looking at the tiny box from George Hotz. And today we got something completely different. So this isn't a new GPU, this isn't a new computer, it's not a new framework although they kind of have their own framework. This is called the Truffle One. So if you follow Sim for Satoshi on Twitter, you've probably seen some teasers about this. So the Truffle is a really interesting device. It does technically use an NVIDIA GPU, but the platform on top of it is a bit different and actually outperforms certain models. So what is the Truffle? Should you buy it? Is it actually comparable to NVIDIA GPUs at this price point? And where does it fit in in the world of local LLMs and hacking on LLMs without the internet in the next year relative to the future of LLMs as researchers and AI hackers see it now? Welcome to AI Flux. Let's get into it. So this device is truly something else. I saw this teased just a few months ago, and it's cool that this is now finally released. Uh, you can pre-order it, and I'll show you that page in just a bit. So what actually is this device? So this is basically kind of a small desktop GPU that you can plug into a Mac, and then you get the rough performance of an RTX 3090 with a much better inference layer uh, for running LLMs on top. Now, when you look at GPUs, and we've talked about this on this channel before, the biggest consideration is how easy it is to use, which platforms are actually available, which is why a lot of AMD GPUs and Intel, the ARC GPUs are out of the question. And then the last one is how much it costs per flop of actual compute capability. To be frank, Truffle is not the best deal there is. The best deal there is is still, in my opinion, either to rent a VPS on a platform like Vast AI or to just buy a bunch of used RTX 3090s. However, what's cool is Truffle built an entire compiler stack from the ground up for an NVIDIA Orin device, which is a special type of uh, sort of semi-mobile GPU that's been developed by NVIDIA. And what's cool is this platform is actually more efficient than the one released by NVIDIA, which is really interesting. For instance, this will run mi Mixtral at 22 plus tokens per second without speculative decoding, which is two times faster than GGML on the NVIDIA or an architecture because of the software stack created by Truffle. Their compiler is not open source, but it's, but it's optimized for their boards and in theory wouldn't be very valuable in an open source form anyway. Although I would say they would maybe benefit in the future from improvements from open source, but for now it's closed source. So what does the Truffle look like? So Truffle just sits on your desk. In theory, you could power it over USB-C, and if you connect to it with Bluetooth Low Energy, Wi-Fi, or USB-C, then you can interface with it. The next generation of apps, as they say, aren't really apps at all, but software augmented with intelligence, or in this case, LLM. And what's funny is they, in theory, modeled this over the brain prop from uh, the wetware in Ex Machina, the movie. So Truffle software is built as a set of cortexes, where each cortex occupies a subsection of RAM, Right now, there are three. So there's the audio cortex for transcription, the speech cortex for speech synthesis, and the neocortex for basically just running LLMs. The cortex variants can be booted or swapped easily using their command line interface, which is pretty cool. They also ship it with the toolkit to learn new information, a single command to build models in the cloud and distribute them to other Truffle users. So here is another really interesting revenue stream for them. Again, just kind of farming out GPUs that then allow you to have models that are compressed enough to run on this special hardware device. And they're also going to have an SDK that allows developers to construct rich experiences offloading the intelligence their app requires. So basically, this is a direct competitor in some ways as I see it to WebGPU. The idea is give people the best tools possible to execute and build on top of GPUs while abstracting the infrastructure as much as possible and making sure that you can do a lot of this locally. So this is really, really cool. And I like that it's equally kind of developer focused while also being consumer focused in like a forward looking way. So consumers who want to learn more about AI 
frankly, it's very similar to the plan we have, which is create a bunch of content that is not necessarily developer focused, but it's focused at people who want to learn more about AI and maybe in the next few months be in a place where they can read papers and really understand what's going on. Some of the language here is kind of interesting. They say Truffle is an exocortex company. Our goal is to eventually surpass computers as the primary tool humans use to get things done. But hopefully they're not looking at this in the way that Apple did when they made uh, the ad with the kid with the iPad who then looks at his parents when they say, oh, what's your iPad? And the kid says, what's a computer? But we'll see. So the Truffle one is technically a dev kit with an iGPU, but tomorrow some of you will take it and forge the products of the future, which I think is pretty cool. What's great is there's no fancy keynotes. They just released this on Twitter with a link to their website and a pre-order, and I picked one up. So I can't wait to get this and show you guys how cool these things are. They're also just 3D printing everything. Batch one ships in May and the deposit is 100% refundable. And this is roughly what it looks like. So let's go take a look at what the website actually looks like. So it's pretty bone stock. It just says here, you can pre-order it. Uh, they say run Mixtral at 22 plus tokens per second, run Mistral at 50 plus tokens per second. You can run up to uh, 100 billion parameter models. It has the NVIDIA or an iGPU on a custom carrier board. 200 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, and they have all their API docs here as well. And they're building in Los Angeles, California. Right now, they only have Mac support, which I totally support because um, most everyone doing AI dev that I know, including myself, just uses a Mac. They show here some interesting things. So we have a breakdown of the hardware here, which is the Orin module. So think of this as like a super high performance uh, NVIDIA version of like a Raspberry Pi compute module. They have the daughter board with the LPDDR5 RAM, which is really, really fast, a 60 watt heatsink. So obviously this is sort of a kind of a high-end laptop GPU that is really good at machine learning inference. It's really similar to the 500 series kind of quadro cards they just released. And uh, this is basically intended to be from NVIDIA, kind of an edge AI compute accelerator. So think of it as kind of a generalized TPU, uh, but from NVIDIA. So what's cool here is we can look at the monthly energy costs to run local inference. I can definitely say that running RTX 4090 is as expensive. It's not that expensive per 4090. Maybe this is with like New York or Los Angeles peak energy pricing. But uh, again, it's hyper efficient. It only uses 60 watts. You can train models with a single CLI command. So again, value add uh, that gets, this gives developers who have some idea of how um, training LLMs or fine tuning works. The biggest thing I, I wanna look at here is when they compare the performance of a Truffle 1 to an M1 Mac and an RTX 3090. So technically speaking, in certain cases, and really in most cases, the Truffle 1, although it's $1,300 and about twice the price of an RTX 3090, will basically outperform an RTX 3090 and be about twice as fast as an M1 Mac. Now, some would argue that an M1 Mac is also probably about you know half the price of a Truffle 1, but I would argue the real value here is the form factor, it's the efficiency gains you will get with this just in terms of not having to go through Linux, I use Linux uh, all day long and I have been for 10 years, so I don't mind it, but newer developers might mind it. And what's also cool is I could put this in my backpack and bring it wherever. I wouldn't actually have to try to uh, buy a Pelican case and put my entire GPU server with four 4090s in there and then hope none of it broke uh, in transit. And it's also interesting to note that Truffle's brain is totally open source and they've partnered with a number of companies to make sure that Truffle can support their models. And uh, again, they're opening up new batches, so definitely pre-order if you want to pre-order these. I think this is another really cool approach to uh, AI tooling. Uh, their platform, I think, is quite cool in terms of just being able to run models. I, I really want to do a video, because we've gotten some requests, on the Tiny Box from George Hotz. If you don't know what TinyGrad is, you know, the, the whole idea with Tiny Box is actually using... AMD GPUs to do, um, you know, comparative performative uh, inference and training for AI models with George Hotz's uh, proprietary framework that is also entirely open source. So yeah, I want to keep covering these models. Uh, this isn't exactly an NVIDIA GPU, uh, but it is an NVIDIA based product that does large language model inference. And I think this thing just looks really cool. It looks much cooler than a Mac mini or the USB-C uh, hub I have in my desk. So I can't wait until I get this model uh, to review for you guys. Let me know if you would use one of these, if you think 3090s make more sense, or if you want to keep your power hungry uh, 4090 or A100 GPU server on your desk. I'm really, really curious. 
If you think this thing looks dumb, also let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, so as always, I hope you guys learned something in this video. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share if you liked our content. And we'll see you in the next one.